Hey out there, thanks for tuning in. It's Friday the 13th, TGIF, thank God I'm free. You know, I got 23 subscribers. I got a new one yesterday. My Aunt Jeannie, shout out. So yesterday, I wasn't having that good of a day with real estate. I had a couple little setbacks. I really like to be a motivator and a cheerleader when it comes to real estate. There's so many good things about real estate that that's easy to do. And then when I'm not feeling that good or I have a little setback, maybe just take the day off, you know, and then just come back and share about all the positive stuff with real estate. However, that wouldn't be real. So let me share a little bit about the setback I had yesterday. We went over to Loretta, my friend John and I, looking at framing a little bit of the section in the, in the back of the house, probably some new rafters. That, that house has a huge budget. budget. And there's a lot of work that's required there. However, yesterday we went over there, we got up on the roof and when we got up on the roof, the back neighbor came out and she said, and she wasn't very friendly. She said, uh, hey, you gonna knock that thing down? My first instinct is to say, go back in your house. However, I said, oh, hey, how you doing? I'm Harry. I just bought the house about 30 days ago. She didn't wanna hear it. Well, you gonna take that down? You're gonna get permits, stuff like that. Ooh, a little abrasive. I played it cool, but when I left, I was thinking to myself, I never planned on getting any permits on that house. I'm gonna replace some two by fours, put siding, put sheathing, all this kind of stuff. No permits coming out. <laughs> However, now that that happened, my mind starts racing a little bit about what I gotta do. So I had the nosy neighbor talking about permits that I never planned on. It opens up a can of worms. For me, it opens up a can of worms when you start dealing with the town. I'm going to do everything as legal as possible. I'm not going to make a house unsafe or anything like that. But from my experience, you know, dealing with the town and they get, they get in your business, it becomes a little more difficult as far as the timing and all that kind of stuff. Not so much money. It's the timing. For instance, a permit could take up to 21 days to come back in. And if there's anything wrong on the permit... Uh, or the application, they could, they could kick it back, and then it could be another 21 days. Anyway, make a long story short, I wasn't planning on this, but now that the neighbor came out, I better get one. So, I started getting into some negative thoughts. You know about negative thoughts? Fear, darkness. What am I doing in this business? can't believe this is happening. It's happened to me before, but every time it happens, it's like a big surprise. Maybe I shouldn't be doing this. I guess I don't know what I'm doing. I really want to crawl back into bed. You ever get like that? Like something happens, you get full of fear. And usually for me, the first place, the easiest place my mind wants to go to with negativity is money. How, like, how much money am I going to lose? I'm going to lose it all. People aren't going to like me. It doesn't come at me as direct as that or as clear as that. But I think you get the picture. Money is, for some reason, the easiest place for my mind to go to. So I want to crawl back into bed. However, I didn't. The next thing that happened, you probably heard this saying before. I never did, but and I'm not making it up, but I heard of angervation, motivation fueled by anger. Now there's a catch. There's a, there's a catch. Well, there's a catch for me. And I would say there's probably a catch for you too. You have to be careful and it can only be temporary. For me, it can only be temporary. I cannot live in a state of anger or even angervation. It's just not a place I want to be. I want to be kind and loving, and it's proven to be very successful for me over the past 17 years. So, angervation got me at least to the point where I wasn't going to be crawling back into bed and hoping this went away. I don't do that, but I'm trying to illustrate something here in case you feel that same way, whether it's in real estate or in life, that... There's a solution to the problem, and I'm going to get onto the other board now. So I got into angervation, like, <sighs> I'm in this business for a reason. I've been successful with eight houses now. This is nothing. This is, if I want to make the big bucks, I better put on my big boy pants. So I call that the solution switch. The solution switch. Getting out of the problem and getting into the solution. Setbacks and surprises are going to happen. In this business, I've talked about it in my videos. I better practice what I preach. You know what really helped me? 
as soon as I got into the solution switch, I thought about my 23 subscribers, you guys. And I thought about, what am I going to say to these guys? To be honest, like I said, setbacks happen. Surprises happen. This isn't for everyone. Flipping houses is not for everyone. It's not all rainbows and butterflies. Sometimes this stuff happens. What did I do about it? How do I get into, you know, a positive solution and get out of the problem? First thing I do is I make some phone calls. I shouldn't say the first thing. First, I sat in it for a while. <laughs> Felt a little comfortable, like a warm diaper. Sat in it for a little while, right? And I said, well, what's worked before? Made some calls. Made a call to my attorney. I asked him uh, for some guidance as far as, you know, what type of permit, what could I do, what could I not do, things like that. He's become a friend of mine over the years, so he gave me some good advice. Some of the calls I made were, were unrelated. It was to people that I know that are maybe struggling with something in their life, and I called them up. Didn't talk about my stuff. We talked about their stuff. And when I got off the phone, I felt better. Even though I didn't talk about my stuff, and we talked about theirs, when I got off the phone, I felt better. It's like a mystery how that happens. Thinking about somebody else makes me feel better. I love paradoxes. I wrote out the facts. The facts are not necessarily my thoughts because my thoughts are not realistic. I'm, I'm broke. I'm going to go broke. People aren't going to like me. Those are thoughts. Those are things that my mind creates, but they're not facts. So when I write it out, I start feeling a little better. You know, I got a little bit of money. I got that house in Matawan that's closing. Quite a bit of money's coming in from that. Let me put together a plan. What do I have to do if I got a nosy neighbor that's definitely saying I need a permit? I guess I better start that process of how to get a permit. There's a plan. I run worst case scenarios because in my mind, the worst case scenarios are like, I'm going to die. That's worst case scenario. When I put it down on paper, worst case scenario, it's not that bad. Then I think about people. Who can help me? I got my lawyer. Do I need a survey? I better call my surveyor. Do I need an architect? I better call an architect. Do I have a contractor? That's something I have to work on. But still, the people that I could use to help me get to the next step. Then what I want to do is I want to take some action. I want to get out of the problem. I want to get into the solution. And then the thing that makes me feel the best is put my next foot forward. Action. Start the process. So for me, in this particular case, meant reaching out to the town, asking them what I need to do in order to start the permitting process. While I'm doing this, I'm making sure that I'm nice to the people on the phone. And surprisingly, they're nicer than my, my mind <laughs> made it out to be. Like when I was thinking yesterday, like calling up the town, they were going to be like, hey, you're bothering me. The way I spoke to two women. And uh, they were both super sweet. They walked me through the whole process. It's going to be timely. It's not going to be as fast as I want it to be. It's not how I want it to go. However, acceptance is a big part of it. So I got into action. Now, how am I here today? And I'm feeling a lot better and I'm making this video. Probably a good thing I didn't make it yesterday. I would not have been as upbeat. I realized I'm not alone. When I made those phone calls... I realize that I'm not alone. And there's other people out there doing doing life on, on their terms and, you know, connecting with them and connecting with the professionals, my attorney and contractors and things like that also helps. So I know that I'm not alone. And neither are you. I want to make sure that you knew that. Neither are you. You're not alone. Uncertainty is a certain in real estate and in life. I have to remember and remind me of this. When I make a video a month from now and say, hey, another surprise happened. And then you could comment on the bottom and you could say, hey, Harry, you did that video last month. Remember when that surprise happened? I have to remember that uncertainty is definitely going to happen again in the future. How do I handle it? What do I do? I'm going to use this as an experience, a lesson, so that when that happens again, maybe I won't sit in it for a day. So, the lesson I'm trying to give today is this stuff happens. It happens to me, it happens to you. What we do about it and how we get out of it is the important part. Till next time.